Hey everybody, welcome back to my coverage of the Pog Champs 3 tournament. This is the first Constellation semifinals bracket match. Uh, Pokimane versus Michelle Kari, and uh, this is going to be a crazy match. We have Pokimane. I think Pokimane is the slight favorite here. I think her rating is a little under what it should be. Uh, but who knows, this is the Constellation bracket. Anything could happen. Michelle could definitely get a win or two, uh, and we'll just have to see. So... Uh, let's see how the players played. Pokemon has the white pieces, and whoever wins this match will be going on to the Constellation Bracket Finals. So we have D4 from Pokemon and D5 from Michelle. Bishop F4 Pokemon going for that London system, which we've seen her and many other PogChamps competitors use. We have Knight to F6 from Michelle and E3, continuing that London setup. E6, and now Bishop D3. And C5, I really like this move from Michelle. Uh, I think, yeah, just... Um, I was going to say, I think Michelle probably uh, did some prep just based on how well she played this opening because she actually plays a really good setup, a really strong setup versus the London. And uh, so I think she may have uh, predicted that Pokemon would go for the London and looked at some some strong lines to uh, prepare against that. So yeah, striking in the center, the C5 move. Generally in Queen's Pawn games, if white doesn't play C5, uh, then playing C5 as black is... Or excuse me, if white doesn't play c4, then playing c5 as black is uh, very strong. Sometimes you can even play c5 when white plays c4, like in some Tarash variation. Uh, but we have c5 here from Michelle, and Michelle's probably already equalized here. Uh, we have c3 from Pokemon and knight to c6 from Michelle. Continuing development, we have knight to f3 and queen to b6. This queen developing to the b file and pressuring this b2 pawn is very common in the London as the bishop no longer defends uh, the b2 pawn and i think it's a very strong idea from black as well we have queen c2 now defending that pawn and bishop to e7 michelle continues development here we have knight e5 from pokemon uh, pokemon i think uh, likes this knight jump this knight uh, coming to e5 i think we've seen her use that move in uh, some previous games use this type of maneuver um here i think more principled would have just been a developing move like knight bd2 but knight e5 is perfectly fine as well we have castles and castles, bishop d6 now, and knight to d2. So now we have this knight to d2 move. And both players playing the opening very well. No mistakes so far. So uh, congratulations to both of them for that. Uh, you do have to be careful about this bishop, though, as it is undefended. There could be some potential discoveries with the knight, like knight takes f7. Um, I don't think any tactics with that work right now, but um, you just have to be careful about that with this undefended bishop lined up with white's bishop we have c takes d4 from michelle and c takes d4 from pokemon knight b4 now hitting the queen and the bishop michelle looking to pick up the bishop pair and we have queen to c3 and michelle picks up that bishop pair knight takes d3 queen takes d3 but here as pokemon you actually have to take with the knight and the reason is a little complicated uh, but we'll we'll see so after queen takes c3 um, it looks like you hang the B pawn, for example, so maybe it's not that complicated. But here, black can't actually just immediately take this B pawn, and we're going to see why in a sec. Instead, they have to go knight to h5, first going after this bishop, and you have to back your bishop up because uh, you don't want to ruin your pawn structure. And now black will definitely take this bishop, uh, and now black can play f6 and kick this knight away back to f3. And now that this knight is no longer on e5 controlling the c4 square... Uh, we can take this b2 pawn. And you might be wondering why is it important that this knight no longer controls the c4 square. Well, let's find out. After queen takes d3 in the game, Michelle played queen takes b2. And now this gives Pokimane the opportunity to go for this knight fork on c2. So uh, she will have two... Uh, um, this will be a fork on the uh, bishop and the queen. And also with this undefended bishop, it will also be a discovered attack. So you can sacrifice one of your knights on c4, but then you'll regain the bishop on d6. Uh, and you'll also gain this d5 pawn um, as it will have to capture. So here you can start with either knight, uh, knight d to c4, for example. And after d takes c4, knight takes d4 uh, and queen b5, or sorry, not queen b4, but queen b5, uh, we could have bishop takes d six and rook to d8 and uh, this would be good white would be up a pawn here uh, so yeah you can't actually immediately go in for this pawn as white you also might be wondering though after knight dc4 uh, what if 
black doesn't take what if we just immediately play queen to b4 and defend our bishop well now there's this knight takes d6 queen takes d6 and now there's discovered attacks with the knight that are actually useful which uh you can play knight takes f7 but stronger is knight to g6 uh hitting this rook and also the queen so black will lose an exchange here so you're gonna lose material either way either you'll lose an exchange or you'll lose a pawn but yeah you you cannot take this pawn immediately as black as it just fails tactically but this is a really hard tactic to see so it's no surprise that pokemon missed it she played rook f to b1 uh, simply going after this queen and the queen only has one safe square which is a3 and michelle finds it we have queen takes a3 and bishop takes a3 uh, and now knight d to f3 we have now rook d8 from michelle and bishop g5 from pokemon bishop to e7 unpinning this knight and uh, preventing your pawns from being doubled and now a4 from pokemon we have bishop d7 finishing development but this bishop had a very important job on c8 which was it was defending this b pawn so here you had to first either play uh, rook to b8 or a move like b6 um, just so that that pawn is defended if you play bishop d7 here this simply hangs the pawn which pokemon takes not only does it hang the pawn after rook takes b7 but it's also a skewer so this bishop is attacked uh, twice it is defended twice but this knight can be removed and if the bishop moves then the bishop on e7 hangs uh, so th there's nothing you can do here um th there's absolutely nothing you can do here you can try a lot of things as a black but you will lose a piece here so uh, in the game michelle tried king to f8 and now Pokemon does find this remove the defender tactic with bishop takes f6 the only winning move for white we have bishop takes f6 now and now this bishop on d7 is hanging which Pokemon takes with knight takes d7 check king to e8 and michelle is or sorry Pokemon is up a piece so she's totally cool with those traits and this also doubles uh, black's pawns so she plays knight takes f6 we have g takes f6 and now knight to d2 uh, we have a5 now and f4 getting rid of that back rank weakness advancing your pawn and preparing to get your king into the game i really like this move from pokemon we have rook to d7 now and here pokemon should definitely go for this trade you're up a piece so you, you definitely want to be trading here uh, the more pieces that get traded off the closer you will get to a uh, easily winning position but pokemon doesn't go for this trade she instead plays rook b5 uh, not sure why she didn't go for this trade but uh, we have rook b5 we have e5 now and this simply hangs a pawn uh, you do sort of ruin your pawn structure as white but you're also you're trading pawns and you're winning a pawn so you should take this we have f takes e5 f takes e5 and d takes e5 uh, this definitely would have been good for pokemon but instead of this uh, we simply have knight to b3 from pokemon we have e takes f4 now and e takes f4 rook to e7 from michelle and uh here a pokemon has a double attack on this pawn and also the d pawn is hanging so uh, here you actually have to take either of these pawns with the rook you cannot take the a pawn with the knight because if you take the a pawn with the knight now there's rook e to a7 and it's a skewer on the knight and the a pawn you can't defend both so after uh, knight to c6 for example rook takes a4 um, black would regain their pawn so uh, not the most accurate still obviously very winning for white but um uh, yeah you can't just take this pawn with the knight here that wouldn't be the most precise but pokemon does take this pawn with the knight also by taking this pawn with the rook you would try to initiate another trade um i think maybe you would actually no um yeah i was gonna say maybe you could force the trade but i, I don't think you could um but yeah you want to initiate trades when you're up in material but we have this knight takes a5 anyway and rook to e4 uh from michelle we have rook takes a d5 now picking up that other hanging pawn and rook takes f4 a few more pawn trades we have knight to c4 now and rook to d8 once again pokemon should definitely go for this trade but instead we have rook to e5 which simply hangs the rook and will michelle see it uh, i i don't know what pokemon was thinking about this, this move maybe it was a mouse slip but um yeah i don't know so definitely giving michelle a chance to get back in this game and after f takes e5 knight takes e5 michelle is now up in exchange but it's still probably drawing um maybe it's winning for black with perfect play but it, it's going to be a draw in a lot of practical scenarios especially because white has these two extra pass pawns uh, well black can regain one of them with uh, rook takes d4 but um 
uh, yeah, maybe this is a draw, maybe this is a win. If you can trade one pair of rooks and trade the pawns, then this will definitely be drawing for white. So uh, I, I think many, many, uh, if you, it, many games from this position would be drawn. But, you know, black could also win. And what, what am I saying? I don't even know. Um, uh, sorry, guys. Uh, we have knight takes e5 in the game. And uh, here, Michelle should definitely pick up this d-pawn. But instead, she plays f6. So this now allows knight to f3, white hanging on to this pawn. And uh, now it's going to be a lot harder for black to win. Uh, but in, uh, Michelle takes this pawn anyway. She plays rook takes d4, rook d takes d4. And um, yeah, this, this this move just doesn't make sense. You're, you know, you, you just won the exchange and now you're giving it back. So uh, knight takes d4, rook takes d4, and now it's white with the winning chances. White might actually be winning here. Um, it's still complex, but uh, yeah, what white could be winning this. White is definitely the one who's ahead here. So uh, yeah, but we don't actually have this in the game. We have rook to e1 check instead, and now you can save. Uh, you can save your rook. You can you guys can actually even play the f rook. Um, you can play the f rook to e4 because now if white takes this rook, then the rook on e1 hangs. So this actually happened in the game after Pokemon played rook to e1 check. Michelle played rook f to e4. Maybe she just didn't see this rook was still hanging, or maybe she saw that she would she could counterattack this uh, a uh, this e rook. Excuse me. Uh, and in the game, Pokemon played knight takes d4, which is now this, now this is losing after rook takes e1 check and king to f2. Uh, here you can play uh, rook to e4 and pick up this a pawn. And um, once again, maybe white can draw this. It might be a win for black with perfect play, but it's going to be a draw a lot of the times too. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, Pokemon could still probably get a draw here, but Michelle would definitely be the one fighting for the win. But we don't have rook to e4 in the game. Instead, we have Rook to a1, which is just as good. I mean, you're going to win this pawn. Uh, either way, you cannot defend this as white. Yep. Nope, you can't defend it. Uh, we have g4 as g4 from Pokemon, and Michelle picks up that a4 pawn. We have knight to f5, and now rook takes g4. And here, Pokemon resigned, which I think is definitely an early resignation. So, yeah, Pokemon resigned here, given the win to... Michelle Kari. Michelle takes the first game in a bit of an upset. But yeah, this is definitely an early resignation. I mean, if you can win these last two pawns, then it's going to be a draw. And, you know, even if you have to uh, sacrifice your knight for one or both of the pawns, you know, maybe, who knows, Michelle might not know how to do the king and rook checkmate. So you should definitely play this on as Pokemon uh, and definitely a very early resignation. Uh, from her but yeah she'll just have to come back in the second game now and now she has to win the second game in order to make it to the or make it to the tiebreaker first and then she has to win the tiebreaker to make it to the finals so michelle definitely a strong start to this match and yeah i don't think i have anything else to say so thank you for watching and check out my pop champ 3 playlist up there check out a, another chess video over there stay awesome stay subscribed i love you guys see you next time